Thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. This is this two stamp scene that I stamped out. I feel it looks nice and full and um, varied in terms of using two stamps. Just with the simple use of some pigment inks and some gel pen. It's one of those things I do in just about all my scenes at this point in time, but uh, if you pigment inks used in the, uh, you know, kind of liberal portions in this scene, but applied with your simple tool of a cotton swab or q-tip, whatever you call it, whatever country you're in, to apply some nice tones and to really diffuse um, some of the imagery around there, makes it more varied and three-dimensional. And then kind of running these beams of light um, through the scene, kind of over some areas and under other areas within the uh, given composition makes the uh, kind of that space within the scene seem a little bit more uh, 3D, I guess you can say. That's always the fun thing is trying to take, you know, two-dimensional surface and uh, make it look a little bit more three-dimensional by how you manipulate uh, a range of values and a range of uh, textures within the scene. Finally, little, little dots in here applied to represent, I don't know, kind of highlights within objects and also to kind of create these little glowing little spheres of light within here. You know, again, with just some a little bit of pigment ink and uh, gel pen work can go a long way. Anyways, this scene um, or this image is from the company Marks of Distinction. I don't know if they're still around or not, but I have seen this angel in other lines before, so I think it was just uh, some uh, clip art that they've used, but I had a lot of fun with it here. You can use any type of imagery to do this, just a little circle of clouds around there, done in various values. And you'll see how I uh, did that, uh, if you choose to watch the video, how I did the cloud in three different tones, but I kind of let things develop, and then I can just stamp over the top of all of my toning and coloring with some additional imagery just to make this kind of cloud area seem a little bit more deep um, with the use of these varied uh, impressions of uh, that same imagery. So anyways, uh, just a lot of fun stuff. I wanted to go with a kind of a simple composition here. And I was looking at that cloud stamp and um, oh no, I just wanted to do something with that. I was looking at these uh, examples of uh, kind of some of the demonstrations I did last week at the uh, Carson rubber stamp convention. Okay, so anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, just drop me a note in the comment section. Thanks for tuning in to the channel. Okay, let's see what we can do with this. Angel and Cloud Stamp. I was at the Carson Rubber Stamp Convention last week, and one of the things about demoing at the demo table is kind of giving people an overview on uh, how things work. And uh, one of the things I always cover um, periodically at the uh, shows during my demonstrations is how to utilize stamps in an overlapping fashion and uh, how to blend them uh, with their sibling imagery and also with themselves in a seamless manner. All right, now the cloud stamp is one of those stamps that I consider kind of... Uh, one of those foundational designs that uh, it's very universal in terms of uh, the different scenes you can use it in because it's kind of a filler stamp but it can be also be um, the main subject of a scene as well or the only thing in a scene it could be just a, a lot of sky okay so what I'm going to do and this angel stamp by the way is from marks of distinction I'm going to utilize just I'm going to do a, a real simple scene and I'll do something kind of akin to this um, 
kind of twirly, you know, break in the clouds uh, type of a uh, uh, scene. And I'm going to use it with this angel here. And uh, it'll be a fairly simple composition the way I'm seeing it, but we'll try to make it look um, nice and dramatic. Okay, so I'm just going to ink this up. It's a mm, kind of a medium tone blue. Fairly, you know, a decent, decent value though. Probably 50%, I would say. All right, top of the clouds right up here. I'm gonna, going to wipe away a lot of that ink because I'm going to have that angel coming out of the clouds and it's going to be coming out of the clouds roughly in the middle of the scene. All right, I'm going to get some overlapping occurring, but I'm not really worried about that at all. So the part where I wiped off is that top portion. So it's going from wet to dry a little bit. Don't wipe it off completely, just kind of... See, I inked it up completely. You can see it right there. And I'm, you know, I'm giving it a good dabbing, but I might not be taking off everything, okay? So I'm not going like that, taking off just a real straight streak. I'm just kind of dabbing it right in this area, but I'm dabbing it, you know, pretty decently. Taking off a good portion of the ink so that it transitions from um, dark to light because it's going from wet to dry. And just do that every time. You just kind of have to remember what side to kind of wipe off. And I'm wiping off the top side of it. Although the stamp could really be used, you know, right side up, upside down, whatever. It just depends on where you want the lighting to be from. So my light is going to be coming from below up here. So as I stamp it, I'm doing it in this fashion right here, okay? So it's turned this way on the bottom portion, and it's turned this way on the sides, okay? So every time I have this point part pointing in, and this is the cloud cumulus 018E stamp. And one of the things that I show people at the shows too is when I give the impression. I have it kind of center pressure right here, you know, for the most part. In other words, I'm not rocking it either, which would give, you know, this top line a much more distinct, you know, edge. So we want to avoid that type of thing. And we want it just to transition nice and gracefully. Okay. It's always a kind of a stamp designer's kind of a, you know, um, I don't know what the word would be, not revelation, but you're always really happy when a stamp works as well as you hope it will when you're designing it. In terms of the, you know, when it comes to scenic stamping, you hope it blends very well and is nice and uh, defined and detailed, but not too detailed where it's going to puddle up with the ink in the in the tight details within the, uh, in this case, a lot of dots. And that was one of those situations with the cloud cumulus. It worked exactly the way it had hoped. It would. Okay, so this angel is going to be, it's, it really is going to be in front of these clouds. Well, I tell you what, what I'll do is I'll mask off these ones and maybe it'll look like uh, it's coming kind of from behind those clouds out in front of this area. I'll see what I can do. If it's not perfect, you know, uh, so be it. I'll get it as good as I can though. But I'm not really worried about it too much. I got this Marks of Distinction stamp probably 20 years ago. I've seen it in other stamp lines, okay? I don't know if Marks are still out there. I used to see them at the shows all the time. But it was a really long time ago. Might have been 
It might have been as recent as 15 years ago, but it really has been quite some time. But I used to love them. They had these really huge blocks, too. I think this is a one inch in these craftsmanship. He put this sticker down on here, then he put this other mylar kind of coating, you know, that would seal that one label in there. So it was just a lot of work uh, on these stamps here that he used to do. And uh, I don't know, I guess as a fellow manufacturer, I kind of appreciate that kind of detail that went into them. Maybe more so these days, because you don't see it as much these days. You know, certain types of uh, uh, manufacturing details, but, um, uh, you know, because you just don't get as many kind of wood-mounted stamps anymore, too. But, um, I don't know. I kind of really enjoy seeing that type of thing these days. Um, I was at Viva Las Vegas Stamps years ago. And um, there was this big old table, if you've ever been in there, and if they still have that kind of that table full of rubber. Um, he had uh, a big stamp collection, kind of, I think it was on consignment from a collector that had thousands of stamps, so he was selling a ton of their stamps for them. And I was able to uh, pick up a lot more stamps from some companies that hadn't been around for a long time, so I was really happy to get uh, stamps from, I don't know, some of those companies that I really uh, used to like, but I didn't pick up uh, as many as I'd hoped to, or would have liked to, before the companies kind of disappeared, so I picked up some stamps from places like Imaginaire, and uh, I don't know, there was, there was a few more. All right, let's see how I did. I kind of wiped off some of the ink off of various portions so that this um, image would stamp lighter in some areas. Now, this is a really large stamp. There's not a ton of surface area, but I'm still going to stand up and stamp this out. There's a lot of tight detail in it. It's one of those old engravings with a lot of tight line work, so I want to really make sure that I got it. I'm going to put a little too much ink in there, but eh, that'll be fine. Okay. I'll wash that stamp off later, but I, I guess it looks like it's, yeah, it's kind of coming out from, well, I don't know if I should have masked off that wing there, but so be it. All right, let's try to make this look nice and dramatic now. I have plans for this uh, scene um, in the form of, I want a lot of uh, kind of dramatic light flaring out from the, uh, I don't know, just, uh, angels kind of origin coming out from the heavens, you know. So I am just, I tell you what, to kind of expedite this process. I'm just going to take some reinker fluid. It's a very light blue. This one happens to be Aqua from the Adirondacks Lights range, but if you have kind of a lighter blue, that would be a good one to go with, whatever you have. Um, the Memento Summer Sky would be good, but anyways, if you have kind of a reinker, it just it, it just makes the this process in terms of this first layer go very very fast and it's a very light color so you can kind of just slather it on I'm kind of giving this more of a vignette and I am leaving some of these clouds a little bit lighter but mostly on the interior of the scene okay I'll make them darker on the perimeter like that and when you're utilizing kind of some reinker fluid, your process is really can be a matter of seconds, okay? Because it's just it's like you're making a paintbrush out of your sponge tip like this. So it just makes the process go a little bit faster if you have it. If you don't, then you can ink up your pet, uh, tool in the pad and just apply it, you know, like so. All right, 
switching off. This one's a Bahama blue. The previous one was Adirondack lights, uh, aqua. Kind of keeping this a little more perimeter oriented now. Okay. Let's switch up. Let's go to Danube blue, even darker. It doesn't look too dark though because my tip here really has a lot of that really light ink in there still, so um, you know I'll have to go pretty dark for it to show up. That's one of the things. I mean, when you use a lot more ink, it takes a little bit longer to apply sometime because the paper is kind of almost super saturated, so. Okay. That is that. Let me switch up to some Marvies. This is the kind of one of the aspects of the Marvy inks that I recommend is, uh, you know, having whatever brand of inks you're going with, most of which are fairly thick inks in terms of the viscosity of them. But when you start moving into the Marvy inks, they're a little bit thinner, so they can penetrate those um, thicker layers of ink and apply to the paper, thus changing your paper, um, the values. So that's the darker blue right there. It's a little bit darker than the other areas where it's not applied. Okay. It's still not, you know, the straight blue version like this. Okay. Because I'm applying this in a very light fashion because this is a sponge, okay? So it's not going to look like that, all right? So that's, that's the... Um, kind of the pressure I use, okay? I'm not squeezing it down like so, giving me these kind of uh, really harsh, in this case, oval-shaped marks, okay? Because I'm just, I'm just touching it to the paper, so it's a very light application, you see? That way, you know, I mean, it's for various reasons. I want a soft touch, and I want a light application of things, so it's almost like you're, you're applying like a, almost like a powdery touch of that um, ink to your paper, okay? So it's all kind of in the touch. In other words, just don't pound it too hard. Just don't squeeze it out, you know, on your paper. I mean, you could, in some instances, if you want to get some kind of, you know, big slathering of uh, ink on there, but for the most part, you know, through most of the process, it's, you know, a much more gradual application. Just take it nice and easy. Now, this is Prussian blue, so it really gets dark pretty fast, so matter of fact, it's not going on quite as... Um, uh, incrementally as I'd like. It's almost too dark, but it's fine. I'm going to show you something else with this, too, to give it even more dimension. Okay, you can see it's getting pretty dark on the top. Okay, and then there's the Prussian blue. Boy, that's dark. The ink seems to be a little bit different, too, for some reason, with the Prussian blue. It's not just, I don't know, whatever dyes or something they use. It's like chemical or something, because this ink can really, really stain something um, if you don't kind of wash it off quickly. And uh, I don't know, I can just feel it. It's a little bit different. I love it because it's really dark, and I love a, a nice range of blue t uh, values, but it feels a little bit different. Okay. All right. It's coming 
out from the background a little bit more. I just realized I'm getting a lot of glare on this, and I just realized I have my uh, overhead light on. I'm going to pause this and switch that one off. Okay, that's a little bit better. I was wondering, what is going on? My last video was on uh, that little book that I did. It's a... Was it six-year-old or five-year-old? I needed, needed more fill in light for that. Okay, this is coming along nicely. Now, let's take a look here. All right, let's do a couple more things on this. Okay, we've achieved a pretty thick saturation of that. Now, I've lost a lot of the uh, cloud structuring right here, okay? Because it's all in darkness, and the cloud was stamped in a lighter blue. So this is what you do, or you can do if you want to. Go to a darker color. I'll go with the Prussian blue, or even black. Maybe I'll do both. Okay, same process. You're just going to take this and <clears throat> kind of mop off you know, a good portion of that edge. Remember which way to turn it now, okay? And we're going to come in here, like so, and we're going to have darker versions of it on the perimeter. So you'll have lighter versions in the middle where the light is, and darker impressions in the darkness. See how you get that nice range of value within the impressions themselves, okay? So, that being said, going back to my point on scenic stamping with a lot of people in my demonstrations and whatnot, uh, scenic stamping is one of the most forgiving types of genres in stamping because, you know, something disappears as you color it and whatnot, you can stamp a darker version of it and it really doesn't look out of place. In fact, it enhances or can enhance, you know, the imagery. Okay, so you see it's getting bolder, so there's the side without, that's the side with. Um, I don't know, we can just put it on one side or whatever. Two sides, whatever, maybe I'll leave that bottom one as is, I don't know. Let's see. Kind of wiping it off, like so. Come in here. building up. Hmm. Let me just go for another impression. I won't even re-ink it. Let me see if I can get kind of a darker version over here. It doesn't have to be as dark as a freshly inked up stamp would provide, but let's take a look. Eh, not bad. Okay. A little bit more dimension there, doesn't it? And it looks kind of deeper. When you have kind of a range of value in a scene, be it just the fact that you're coloring background in a range of values. Um, could be one thing, but you can stamp your imagery in a range of values too, like background, you know, trees to be gray or something like that. You know, it creates this uh, kind of a deeper space, all right? So that looks kind of cool. And, I mean, it looks kind of more complex, but you're just using the same stamp. You're just using, you know, a range of values again. So it's a really simple technique, you know, to really um, give your existing stamps kind of a different look, and uh, it's one of the parts of a... Uh, I really like to maximize the use of a, of a given stamp, so in other words, like trees and things like that, clouds, whatever, you can really repeat them over and over within a given space, and hopefully, you know, it looks like a, a whole as opposed to a bunch of separates, okay? Okay, now, 
That was done in the Prussian blue. Let's do it again. I have black now. And I think black will be... Oh, I, don't, I wouldn't say necessary, but it will be a good hue or tone to use in the scene because the angel is stamped out in that same tone, in that same value, so it's good to kind of anchor a different part of the scene in the same value. Okay, in something as dark as some of the darkest imagery. Now this is a really simplistic composition in terms of the number of stamps and imagery used, but we can still do that in the clouds. So we have clouds in kind of a medium blue, darker blue, and black to kind of finish things off. Okay, see that it's really just... So here's a kind of light blue, darker blue, and black kind of on the perimeters. Okay, let's go about right here maybe. And what I like to do is after I do those types of marks, I like to kind of finish things off a little bit more and blend it with the same color that I just used on the imagery. Okay, so I'll go back again. So it's not like something where, you know, scenic stamping or stamping in general, really, it has to be kind of a linear process. It's more of a circular one, you know, where you add a little tone, you can stamp, add a little bit more, stamp again, you know, some other type of image. And you, you can keep going back and forth depending on what you see in terms of uh, what something might need as it develops. So again, you really don't have to have kind of a a full, you know, kind of set process in mind. You know, in terms of uh, do you put the color on first, then stamp the stamps, or do you stamp the imagery first and then do the coloring? Well, it's kind of, you know, you can work in a myriad of different ways. You can just stamp the entire scene out first and then color it in. With me, it's, you know, it's kind of going back and forth between uh, that coloring and imagery and details and sometimes coloring more. But it's going to be different, you know, for me with every scene that I do. Okay, let's get into this one now. Now, here's one of the things that I see um, that sometimes can be improved on a scene. Um, that's when people ask me, okay, what does this need, okay? We have a good background in here, but we have the imagery in there. And the imagery, well, I mean the imagery is the clouds too, but I'm talking about the main subject matter. The main subject matter is does have values in it, okay, in terms of the details of the stamp, but chances are in the shadows of a given light source or lighting scheme, color scheme. If we don't address, you know, our subject matter in a similar tonal kind of theme, it will look kind of unrelated to its surroundings, okay? I mean, you could do that, you know, so for some sort of contextual point, but if you want it related, you have to kind of create those relationships through the use of, it could be texture, whatever, but the biggest one would be, and easiest would be, 
hue and value, okay? So I have this coming out from the background, and I just have this alcohol pen, and I'm adding some tone into it, okay? I'm taking a lot of my cues from the, the shadows, you know, where the image is just darker inherently in the design, and I'm just reiterating it with some color, okay? So if there's some shadow on the figure, I'll just add some more of that color right into that shadow, okay? I don't need to do it if it's solid black, because it's not going to show, but... Now see, I started with a very light blue, and I'll just work darker. That's a little bit too dark maybe for right now. Let me see if I have, I mean, I, if I don't have something, that'll be fine, but... Okay, that was a little bit purple-blue. That one's a little bit lighter. This one's a azure blue. Um, the first one was a uh, aquamarine, okay? But basically, it's real light, and go with something a little bit darker, if you have it. All right. Where do you put this one? I'm just kind of reiterating again. Maybe some of the darker areas. I'll use the darker, this darker one. You can kind of go back to your revert, you know, to your days as a kid working on a coloring book, you know, <laughs> with this type of application. Is it revert or maybe it's regress? Is it? I don't know. I don't know if it's either one of those. But filling in, you can see it's getting a little bit more defined, I guess. Let's see. All right. Okay, a little bit darker. I'm just kind of going in and maybe don't color everything. Kind of creating that relationship between the figure and the lighting within the scene. I mean, it, it's supposed to be real heavenly, of course, so maybe it would be all bass light, but I'll do something with that, you know, coming up. But we want to make it look more kind of rounded and you know, with a lot of volumes in here, rather than kind of a, I wouldn't call it an outline design, because there's a lot of inherent shading and values within the scene, but you really have to go in here and really add some more to really kind of flesh it out a little bit more. Okay. All right, so that's a pretty good foundation. Let's just keep it like that. I mean, you could go in and add some skin tone if you want to. Maybe we'll do that. Nothing too extreme, though. Maybe something like Something like this, maybe. Just a little warm element on the skin. Okay. Just something very simple. It's very subtle. I just put it on the face, a little on the arms. I'm not going to bother with the leg. I have it 
kind of a blue shadow light. Okay, all right. Now let's have some fun here. Let's really get pretty crazy, I think, with some pigment ink. All right, so it looks okay as is, right? I think so. But let's really put this angel coming out from the lighting, okay? So see, I'm really going to turn this kind of perimeter area. See, it's getting lighter right there, right around here, probably in here, you know. I'm going to diffuse a lot of this, so I'm getting... Now this pad of mine is really dry, as you've heard me talk about in the past. I like having kind of a drier pad too. It's just, it just saves me a little bit of time because I know I, you know, I can just go right into the pad. But it, most people's like white pigment ink or just general pigment ink pads are pretty juicy, so just don't put too much on your Q-tip. You know, actually, you want very little. In fact. Um, ink on your applicator so that when you start applying it it won't leave you with big blobs of uh, ink everywhere okay so see yeah, it's kind of diffusing some edges here let's get that arm and some of that light you can have it bottom lit too because those clouds would be reflecting a lot of that light as well. See that nice diffusion? You can see that star on the head kind of glowing like so. Let's hit, it. Let's hit some of that light from behind like that. You can do this with any kind of object too. I mean here it's this angel figure, you know, and uh, I mean, you can do this same type of thing with a tree, in fact, you know, this glowing tree, you know, in the light, give it real atmosphere and mood. See this even on the hand, and on the other side of the wing, look how the figure is kind of, it's, it's giving kind of a... It's making a character, I guess, in this piece out of uh, light, you know, so lighting is, it's like an actor within this scene, and I don't know, it's, it's just as integral uh, as anything, as, as a part of the uh, image even, you know, the scene. It's just as important as that cloud or the angel, I think. The more you kind of put this in here, the more of a, of a kind of a significant player within this scene it becomes. All right, now I'm going with the, uh, this is the color box, um, frost white pigment ink. All right, now I'm going to switch to um, the Hero Hues, the Unicorn, it's the Hero Arts White. I'm, I'm going to see if this is a uh, more opaque than the color box one, okay? And I believe it is, but it's also very a very new pad, so it just got, it has a real, you know, it's loaded with ink. But I believe it to be lighter as well, which is why I got it. I was informed that it's a, a whiter ink by those that uh, were present at the uh, demonstration at Art and Soul, formerly of uh, uh, Olympia or Lacey, Washington. So thanks for that tip, uh, Susie and company.
Okay, I'm adding some of this down to these clouds as well. Making the clouds a little bit more kind of soft and billowy by adding this kind of diffusion over them. Alright, so you can see this angel to me is it kind of looks like it's kind of emerging from the light a little bit more. Yeah. The more of a, this type of ink you lay down. Okay. Kind of get, get a little bit crazy with it, but why not? That's a little bit too much there. I'm just going to flip around to my dry side and kind of spread it around a little bit. It's probably, it's, it'll pick up some of it too. All right, switching back. At some point in time too, as you're applying this, <laughs> if you've applied too much, what you'll notice is um, you'll actually start removing some of the ink. Which isn't a bad thing. You kind of want that ability to be able to do that. But um, if you want it uh, to apply, then you have to really uh, kind of use a delicate touch. All right. Okay, here we go. Something like this would really make a kind of a nice um, Christmas composition. Something like that. All right, so kind of coming out of the darkness, and let's put on some kind of light flares, okay? And we'll bring a kind of a stronger sense of drama into the scene. Although I think it's pretty dramatic as is, but. I think we can make it even more so. All right, I tell you what, let's make... Kind of pick, like, an area that you want the light to be coming from. I was thinking I would have it coming from kind of back in there, like it's coming out in the direction of the... Uh, but I was thinking this wouldn't be bad either, you know, kind of a real... kind of a pyramidal type of... Uh, lighting scheme, or though, if I go from here, then I can have it coming up there. Oh, the choices. Or from right here, too. Boy, that would be a nice kind of dramatic angle, wouldn't it? Okay, I'm going upper right-hand corner. There's no right or wrong. It would look kind of cool here, too, like that, coming out like that. But let's do this corner here. See, I'm just kind of aiming that piece of paper for that corner, and I'll come up this way. All right, now it's just going to be down here. I'm not going to have it go all the way up here because it's coming out from from within those clouds. All right, let's go with the uh, let's go with the color box one. It's kind of a lighter application of it. <laughs> I might need the Hero Arts one. This pad is so dry, it's hardly applying anything. Alright, let's use both. Okay, now, as that beam moves farther away from the uh, source, it starts to... Uh, break up a little bit and dissipate. So I'll try to make it heavier over here and as it moves towards the 
uh, the left side of the paper, it'll diminish a little bit. So I'll go, in other words, I'll go with a little bit more uh, ink over here, and I'll use less of it over here. Kind of removing some ink as well. Okay, so it's like that. It's not very apparent. <laughs> I'd have to make it a little bit darker over here, but I think as soon as I add in more of these, will come about. Let me go from this side. Actually, okay, am I working in here? All right, you say the beam is right here. Okay, I'm gonna make it a little bit heavier. Top side. I'm working upside down here, but. Kind of blend it together with your finger or something too. Okay. There's one light beam. Let's go with the next one. Okay, I think the light beams kind of starts over there. Putting a little bit of that beam on the uh, the wing of the angel. Okay. There we go. It's kind of coming down that way. Kind of alter the, uh, the distance between beams too, making it a little bit more varied. And also the size of the beam, too, you can do, or you can alter. You can have some of the beams go in front of the angel, too. Maybe I'll do that. I'll have this beam coming over the top of it, kind of sandwiching the, uh, the angel within... Uh, that heavenly light. That one's in front of the angel. Those two are in back. Although I could always put it in front of the angel if I want to. All right. We'll have one coming from behind the angel down here.
Just have to kind of spread it around. I see it. I'm kind of removing some of that right there, but I kind of want to remove some of it, so that's fine. A little bit thicker up here. front of them right there okay about like so we go. Alright, need to get rid of some of that right there. Maybe one more down here behind the angel. I'm going to get a fairly wide one, I think. Let's take a look. Looks kind of interesting, I think. Having those beams. Looking to see if I need more. Or one more, maybe. There's six right now. Seven, perhaps. Maybe a real thin one in here. I'll just go like... Uh, real thin. Something like that. How does that look? 
fairly dramatic, I, I, I think, having something like that. I think it looked good before, but this, I don't know, this is like, it's like adding on, I don't know, like, like I said before, it's like adding on another character or something to the scene. It gives it kind of a, it establishes a mood. Um, that kind of already existed, but it really kind of uh, makes it more of a kind of a substantial statement. Okay. Adding some of this to the cloud area. Where the clouds are illuminated, that is. see if we can add a, a little bit of extra texture to the scene. Let me grab my white gel pens. And let's see where we can add some uh, little details maybe, or big ones. I'll start off in my lighter areas where these little highlights w will be a little bit more subtle, okay? Which is in the lighter areas, okay? It's always kind of hard to see what I'm doing here, unless I really kind of zoom in. It's kind of like adding pattern, I guess, These little dots. Okay, I'm kind of going back in kind of the lighter areas of the robe, flowing that uh, robe is uh, catching some of the extra light, I guess you can say. I'm kind of drawing it right along this robe too. Kind of getting rid of some of that uh, outline where it doesn't need to be. I say where it doesn't need to be because there's darkness kind of behind it, all right? So if I just kind of eradicate that line, then uh, it looks a little bit more three-dimensional that way. Same thing with this wing. Kind of go along the wing like that. the arm, getting rid of some of that outline.
Okay, that star in it, uh, their head needs to be a little bit lighter. All right, here's my scratch knife right here. I made it a little bit too thick. I need to taper it, so I'm just going to remove some of it with my stylus, no, uh, not stylus tool, but uh, scraper knife. It'll come off with anything, but. Highlight on the face. Okay. All right. Hmm. Now I'm trying to decide if I want to put any of these highlights in these beams as well. Oh, might as well. Okay. So light is coming from up here. That I'm gonna kind of add some little like flares coming in the kind of the same direction. I'll have some coming in front of the wing as well, or the angel. Putting some in the beams as well. Now on some of these um, little, whatever you call them, little twinkling little flares, what we'll do is we'll get a little pigment ink on our cotton swab, okay? And we'll make some of these, hopefully, <laughs> make some of these look like they're glowing, okay? So you have to kind of use a nice delicate touch you don't want a big blob of ink on there. And some of these will be glowing little spheres of light. Some of these areas of the angel that aren't terribly interesting. Let's add these little glowing elements to it. So they are right there. There wasn't really anything interesting going on in there. So let's do a few more of these. Kind of drying off some of those little balls. They're probably wet, those little gel pen dots. Just try to use a real delicate touch.
kind of obscuring that area back there a little bit more too so the figure is kind of bathed in light a little bit more so A little bit too much. Let's remove some of that. I don't like this one here. I'm going to remove it. It is a little bit too much. There. That looks better. Okay. I love detail, so <laughs> adding more where it doesn't necessarily need it, but I just like doing it, so. Kind of adding it where there's still some lightness on the cloud itself. And uh, I won't be adding any in the too dark of an area because there wouldn't be kind of that highlighting there anyway. Because light wouldn't be hitting it. Okay, something like that. Nice and kind of three dimensional. I mean, you this is a two-stamp scene, so very minimal and uh, I think very full because where you don't have a lot of stamps, we have texture and um, a range in value, so you have value, texture, um, and a range. Okay, so you have crisp and kind of soft. You know, what I'm doing now is very crisp, these little dots. And it's soft where we've kind of diffused it with the uh, additional pigment ink and Q-tips. All right, so something like this might be interesting. Uh, matted off, I think it'll look good in like a silver and blue matte, maybe. Something like that would be good. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll put this in a card format, but simple two stamp scene. So you take your two stamps, or however many stamps you have, you add these different types of elements like that. I mean, that's as, as effective as any, you know, third stamp could be. Um, you have it going over the top of the uh, angel underneath it. So you have trees within a space. And you can put these little beams over the front of some of it, going over some, going in the back of others, you know, in and out, just to kind of vary it and make, you know, your three-dimensional space seem a little more three-dimensional in terms of uh, the overall look, so it's just fun stuff, and then kind of modeling some areas in here with some pens, you know, so we're talking about, you know, pretty basic, uh, simple um, coloring scheme, sponging colors on the perimeter right here, and there's just one big glow and just going into your objects and looking where there are shadows inherently in them so if it was a lakeside cove or something like that with some rocks you can go in 
add a little bit of shade to those rocks. Okay, so it's the same process. It just doesn't really matter what type of imagery it you know it has, and you can really um, bring your uh, imagery to life. All right. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and uh, trying to think of a name for this scene. Haven't stamped my angels in a long time, but eh, figure out something. Um, a lot of fun. Okay, thanks again.